this video, I want to show you how to add a little bit of complexity to your music, especially if you're not an accomplished keyboard player. And the way we're going to do that is with this magical interval of the sixth. So the examples you just heard are all sixths, playing in sixths over top of the music. So the interesting thing about doing that, of course, is that you're adding some harmony. And if you play in the key of the song that you're in, the six that you are playing are all going to work melodically, sort of harmonically in most cases. It's not a perfect science, but if you're new to this, you can try this trick out that I'm going to show you here. And I think for the most part, you'll find that it works really well. So what's the deal with the sixth? Western music is really built on chords and chords are built on thirds. So if we look at a chord, a ma regular C major chord, we've got a major third and a minor third. And to make a sixth, all you have to do is invert the third or take one of the notes and push it up or one of the notes and push it down. So I'm going to take this note right here, the bottom note, I'm going to push it up an octave and now we have a sixth. So that's how you create sixths. And that's why they sound so nice is because they're all just part of the chords that we have in our music, but it works really well to play in thirds or in sixths in the key that you're in over top of the music that you're playing. So if you have a lead line or a melodic line in your music, following it with a sixth below sounds really nice. And this works in major keys or minor keys. So if we were actually in A minor, remember A minor and C major are all white keys. Same thing. Check my music theory video if you don't know about this stuff. I'll put a link in the description. But we've got sixths now in the minor key. just sounds really nice. And then of course the distance of the sixth is one, two, three, four, five, six. Six scale notes away from the first note. So if you start on a C and you're in the key of C, we go one, two, three, four, five, six. Or if you're in the key of C and you start on a G, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's a sixth as well. So these six are all over just, and you can think of it just as the position of your fingers playing in six. So we're going to go over how to play in sixths on the keyboard. We'll talk about that later when I'm looking at Cubase. I'm also going to show you in Machine how you can play in sixths by just using the pads of the machine. So a bit of a, a trick with that. And then I'm also going to show you in Massive X how you can use their synthesizer unison settings. You can actually set it so that you can play in six by just playing one note. So that's kind of a, a, an exclusive thing to Massive X, but you'll find stuff like this in all sorts of other software as well. So give this a try. Try it out on synth pads. Try it out on string parts. You could actually use you know, a viola and a violin and have them play in six. Try it on your synthesizer parts that are polyphonic, of course. Try it on mallet sounds. You could do this on a guitar or with a guitar type patch. There's so many different instruments you can try this out on and it really doesn't matter the genre of music. You'll hear this kind of stuff a lot in more emotional music, say piano stuff and playing in six up at the top. But I love moving the top part of my pad around in six because it really just has this kind of beautiful quality and it's open. And the thing with pads is everything gets so messy if you keep the voicing really tight. So you open things up and you play in six and it just sounds great. So the first thing we'll do is just talk about playing six on the machine itself. Switch it to keyboard mode and then make sure you're in the proper key. I'm in C minor in this case. And all I'm going to do is play the interval of a sixth on the pads. And it takes a little bit of practice to get used to it. So this is a sixth. And it's going to be the same up top. And same thing down here. The only thing we have to do on the machine with these limited pads is that we need to figure out what that one step is where it doesn't. What do I do right there, right? All we have to do is go up to that one right there. And we're playing in sixths. Let's see what it sounds like. Sounds nice. It sounds 
sounds different, and it's going to be something different for you to do other than just playing a single note. Of course, you wouldn't want to do this all the time. But there you go, playing in six on the machine. Just practice it like this. And that's it. Once you've learned it in one key, you can do it in any other key by just changing the semitones right here. And then now you get major. Right? So that's playing in six on the machine. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but it is actually very easy. You can also try doing it with just one hand. Rip around, play a little bit, and uh, try some stuff out in six on that. Next thing I'll show you is in Massive X. This is a really neat feature of Massive X. I absolutely love Massive X. I really think it is an underrated synthesizer. And as I said many times in my videos on Massive X in the past, I really want to dig into this one at some point in the future and um, increase my own knowledge of it so that I can share it with you guys. What we're going to do is we're going to go to this voice tab right here and we're going to turn on Unison. And right away, you're going to have to change the voices. If it's not already at two, change it to two. This knob right here might be all the way at zero. So now all we need to do is take the chord morph and drag this all the way to the right. So now if I turn that off, here, here it is with the unison on. If I turn it off, we can hear that we're playing those two notes right there, which is the sixth part. So it's kind of interesting. It jumps up and gives you a sixth below is basically what's happening below your note. So now that we've got a sixth right here, the next thing we need to do is figure out the key that you're in. I'm in C minor over here already, but just for fun, let's change this to D minor. And then now, now we just go over here and set this one to D minor, make sure chord D tune is off. And then you have to go to harmonization and choose natural minor. So natural minor V or natural minor CZ, I don't think either of those make any difference. And that's going to work with our minor key over here. I'm going to set it back to C minor because that's what our song is in. And that's it. Now we can hear those two notes. And watch what happens when I play along. I'm just going to do one. works really nicely. You've got yourself a sixth. You can even try taking this a step further if you want and take it into some other territory with actual chords. So the downside of this is that you don't, you don't actually get any MIDI that shows you the notes that you're playing. So pretty cool stuff. That's just one way I discovered just in the last few days, just kind of researching ideas for this little video. And Massive X is just a unique instrument that already has some of this functionality built into it. And just in case you're wondering, the Circles Kit is from Faded Reels, really great expansion, which I've got a video on. Now let's go check out Cubase and see what we can do in Cubase to facilitate this whole sixth thing. OK, so we're over in Cubase. I'm going to load up a new patch uh, in Massive X here. And I've imported the little backing track from that other song. So let's just go to Mallet Instruments and try something else. And by the way, there's a new browser in Massive X, which has been extremely necessary. Let's try a synth pad. And then let's go to Character and try maybe Bright. Because this kind of sixth thing will work in with any instrument, really. It could work on your guitar strings, you know, if you figured it out on guitar. Oh yeah, I like this. I like the string bundle. Using these sixths works beautifully with strings as well, not just synthesizers or plucks or anything like that. Cubase, we're gonna do something different. We're gonna play in a single line, and then we're going to generate six off of that line that we just created. So the first thing we need to do is figure out the chords. And if you've got a chunk of music and you don't know what the chords are, all you got to do is go Project, Add Track, and then we're going to go Chord Track. Now this is a new feature of Cubase 12, and it's mind blowing. You ready for this? I'm going to drag this audio right onto the chord track. It analyzes it, and then it makes chords out of that. So let's see if that's right. C minor. E flat, G minor, A flat. So it 
analyzed the chords perfectly, which is great. And it's telling us we're in D sharp major. I thought I played it in C minor. Well, it just so happens that D sharp or actually E flat major is the same as C minor, same key, same notes. So it got everything right, which is awesome. So if you're not a musician, I'm going to try and make this even simpler for you. So right now, the key that I'm in is C minor. But if you don't know how to play in the key of C minor, that's not going to be very useful for you because you're still going to have to play something on the keyboard. And there's a couple ways we could do that. We're going to start with an old way. This will work on any version of Cubase, probably back about 100 years or so. And uh, what we do is we go over to our inspector and we're going to go to MIDI inserts and we're going to drop in a MIDI modifier. So if I click on MIDI modifiers, all I need to do is go to the transpose place right here and I can do something according to this key that we are actually in. So it's saying we're in D sharp major. That's E flat basically is what that is. I want to play in C major. If you want to play in the white keys, you're just going to play in C major. So I need to go up three semitones from C in order, if I play a C, in order for it to sound like it's in E flat, I just need Cubase to change it up one, two, three semitones. So I go over to transpose and I go three semitones and now listen. Take that off. And we're now playing an E flat. Now I can just go and play all white keys and I'm actually gonna be in the key of this little song idea. So now I'm gonna play something in just the white keys and we're gonna add a sixth to that afterward. Okay, so there's my notes. Played those in with panache. Let's go try adding sixths to this. All right, what did it do? So it's played everything in here for me according to the key of A minor or C major because that's what our MIDI transpose is. So any MIDI information here that I play is going to get transposed by this little thing over here, this MIDI modifier of three semitones. So for now, if I was to work on this and if I was you and I didn't know much about music theory, I would probably leave it like this so I could just be looking at the white keys over there. So if we want to do that, let's take these notes and add a sixth. Try taking your interval a sixth down because that top note is going to be kind of like what you're hearing as the, the melody note. And so to get a sixth down, you select all of your notes and we're going to go option and drag this down a sixth. So a sixth down from A is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine semitones. And in this case, I know it's nine semitones because there shouldn't be any black keys. So this is, remember, a, the difference between a major six or a minor six, which is a little bit tighter, a little bit closer. So how do you know which one's which? Well, if, if we're sticking to all these white keys, then just make sure it's on the white keys and not on the, on the black keys. And then you're going to have the right interval. I need to make a copy of the note and move it down nine semitones or move it down to a C. So I'm going to hold Option and drag this down to a C. Now let's have a listen to this. It's probably not going to be pretty. It sounds horrible. And in fact, what I'm going to do with everything here is just take it up an octave. Hold shift and press up arrow, by the way, in Cubase. And that takes everything instantly up an octave. Nice little key command. So I've got my sixth down, but I know that there's some wrong notes. And the beautiful thing about Cubase is the scale assistant and fairly new feature. So with the scale assistant, what I can do is look at my pitches here according to the scale assistant if I change this little drop down here to chords. And now we can see the intervals that are wrong. If you started off with a major six, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine semitones apart, and you see some red notes, you know that these ones should be a minor six, which is just a little bit closer. So all I have to do is select all of the red notes and move them up one semitone. Now they are going to be minor six. So it's just that distance between those two notes. It's getting a little complicated, but this is just kind of what we got to do to get six.
So doesn't that just sound nice? Like six with strings with a string line. Beautiful stuff. Obviously, we're getting into harmony territory here, music theory, and we could take those six and we can add another note, we can add another note, but this is just a simple trick for you to take an interval and try playing around with it in different ways in different DAWs or different applications. Another thing that you could do with Cubase is to learn how to play six on the keyboard. So let's just try that really quickly. All I'm going to do is play the white notes using our MIDI modifier, keeping us in the key of A minor. And then all I'm going to do is play a sixth apart, try and keep my fingers locked in that position. Let's try playing something. So I hope this was helpful for you. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell and all that, and we'll see you in the next video.